excited. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, everybody, it is Millennial Monday. So glad you could come back with us. Uh, I am Minister J. Renee Williams, and I am covering for my brother, the awesome, the only, the Corey Bailey, who will be back with you next week. Uh, and I'm excited because you know what? Don't tell him, but I watch him. So, and I love when he teaches. He is an awesome man of God, and I just can't wait. Um, so, we are in the series called, and today's today's lesson is called to consider Jesus. Um, I am this. Wow, I already told you, but I, I listen. I love Sunday school. First of all, I love all the Bible teachings that we have. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and so I'm excited to teach this because man, it just moves the whole inside of me. Um, yeah, let me say this though. Corey will be back with you next week. And then we'll also be adding uh, Matters of the Heart with Millennials and guests, you know, just in case you're a little on the older side or on the younger side, you're still welcome. All is welcome to come. But it is Matters of the Heart with Millennials. And I'll be doing that segment not on Mondays because <laughs> I do not want to miss Corey teaching on Monday. OK, so uh, bless you all. Um, so here we go. So uh, the aim of this lesson, I got to do this now because it's in caps. It says the aim of this uh, lesson calls us to consider who Jesus is, what he has done, where he is, and what our response to him ought to be. Not uh, just at Christmas, um, but all year long. Um, then, and then guess what? We got to go and tell others to consider Jesus. He will make a difference in their life. Hey, this is, you know, this is picking up from last segment, which was really, really good. Really, really good. Um, so we're going to start off with Hebrews 3 and 1. And I'm going to do it from the Holman Christian Standard uh, Bible version. Okay. So Hebrews 3. Um, Therefore, holy brothers and companions, in, he in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, my goodness, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who, who he is. He is. He is the creator, my goodness. He is the creator. He knows all about you and everything you're in and everything you're going through. And if you're ready to come out, he's ready to bring you out. Here we go. Um, Colossians, let's look at Colossians, uh, chapter one, verse 16. In the, I'm going to again do this in the Holman Christian Standard uh, Version. Here we go. For everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. That's awesome. I'm going to come back. I'm going to circle back. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. My goodness. <laughs> okay. So just a plug in. Because... You're saying the invisible, well, if it's invisible, how, <laughs> how, how do we know it? Okay, so I'm going to tell you. So some years ago, I was sitting in, a, in my geography class. Geography or geology? Okay, so don't, don't knock them. You see this gray. So um, we were sitting in class, and, and the teacher, you know, is one of those, the walls was the screen, you know, and he was showing this movie, and it was underwater, Right. And then it's like this big cloud of uh, smoke. It looked like smoke underwater is what it looked like. But the purpose of it was to feed the unseen animals. The one that you can't see with your naked eye. Good gracious. Y'all listen to me. This is a true story. I was still sitting in class crying when the lights came on. He is the creator that can see things that we can't see, and he takes care of that. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, y'all know that is he takes care of what we can't see. He can feed and give nutrients to the things we can't see. Oh, my goodness. 
Is that a loving God? Is that the creator who knows all things, sees all things? Okay, all right. I just had to come back on that because that thing wouldn't let me go. It wouldn't let me go. Okay, so he is the creator and the heavens reveal his glory. My goodness. If you can believe Genesis 1, you can believe the entire Bible, right? By verse, by verse 3, Jesus speaks the world into existence. He also created man, and specifically, he created you and me. Mm, thank you, Lord. Wow. <laughs> Glory. So he can fix whatever's broken since he created me. He knows exactly what's broken. He can go in. He fixes that. Oh, my goodness. And he keeps and sustains it. Come on, somebody. Woo. Good gracious. But God wants you to know today that the same God that created the stars of heaven can make you shine even brighter, can make you shine even brighter, my goodness, than the stars. Oh, The same God that spoke the world into existence can bring new life into yours in an instant. He can bring new life into your life in an instant. Come on, somebody. Ooh, somebody, listen, one, somebody's looking for that word right there. I know you are, I feel that, my goodness. The same God that formed the chaotic earth into something beautiful and useful, my goodness, can transform your life into something beautiful and useful. Listen, if today your life is in chaos and you've been trying to figure it out and trying to figure out, listen, God, give it, to, give your life to God and watch him transform your life and make it into something beautiful and useful. My goodness. Whew. So God is God and he can do all things. But for him to do that, for him to do that, you must yield uh, yourself to him. Everybody want to see the great things. Can I tell you something? Please don't be scared to yield to God. There is nothing to be afraid of when someone wants to do you good. And, and I got people like, oh, if the Lord, if the Lord, if the Lord changes you, then you'll love you better than you've ever loved you in all your life. If the Lord changes you now, I, I'm going to stay right there. I'm going to pause because we're going to get to the lesson today. I, I'm just saying God is ready to make something beautiful and you don't have to be afraid. Matter of fact, run to it. God, I don't even understand how all this works, but guess what? I want you to change my chaotic life. I just give it and put it in your hands. Okay. I'm going to give you all little snippets as I go. I'm just telling you. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Okay. I think I might have jumped that, but let's, let's check it out. Let's, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 in the New Century Version says, The virgin will be pregnant. She will have a son. And they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. My goodness, he's not ignoring you till you get in trouble or till you do good things. God is with us. Mercy, I love you, Jesus. Since the fall, man has always strived to know God and to have a relationship with him. But sin had destroyed that relationship. But sin had had destroyed that relationship but sin had destroyed that relationship come on so since man could not effectively approach god jesus left heaven and came to earth he took on flesh and became one of us he became one of us just like us so he is the savior number three he is the savior so luke um second chapter verses 10 and 11 says and the New Century Version is what I'm going to read it from. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news that will be a great joy to all the people. Today, your Savior was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. My goodness, I love it. So that the night that Jesus was born, the world was a dark place and all mankind all mankind was lost in the darkness of sin. Man could not fix his own problem of sin. 
when he was born. And man cannot fix his own problem of sin right now without Jesus. Bless you, Lord. He needed a savior to do for him what he could not do for himself. We cannot bring ourselves out of sin. We cannot bring ourselves out into our own deliverance. We just cannot do it. So if you have been thinking and you got all these plans and you done written them down and you are doing, listen, you cannot do it yourself. Hallelujah for God who is faithful and ready to do it for you. So let's look at this. Jesus came to the earth to do just that. He came to the earth to do just that. Oh my gosh. And he's still in the earth. Don't, okay. I'm Number two. <laughs> What he did, what he did. So let's look at Hebrews chapter four, verse 15 in the New King James Version. OK, I'm I'm giving this because I know if some of you are writing this down, you've probably got one Bible with you while we're doing this study. And if you want to look at it in the I'm giving you the version. So if you don't have that particular version, you can go back later and look at it and read it from that context, which is an awesome habit to have. So for um, the scripture says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So he, feel, he felt everything that we feel, but he didn't sin. Look, he didn't go through with it. We'd be in the middle of it. <laughs> Glory to God. But he understands. He understands. Okay, going back to last week, that's why he doesn't condemn. Okay, I'm just, I'm going to put it right there. Glory to God. So, number one, he lived a perfect life. He lived a perfect life. So, Jesus came to earth and clothed himself with human flesh and became one of us. So, he's in his heavenly state, right? In other words, uh, you know, he is like a spirit, like invisible if you will. And then he puts on, he comes down and puts on some flesh. You know, like you would put on your t-shirts or your clothes. He puts on flesh. Glory to God. So he was tempted in every way, just as we are, but never sinned. Then he taught us how to live in righteousness. He taught us how to live in righteousness, but the perfect life he lived also afford him the ability to become the perfect sacrifice. So he's teaching us how to live in righteousness, right? He taught us, he came, and he modeled it so that we know how to do it, right? You know, listen, call me a Jesus freak. You can call me Jesus anything. Thank you. Huh. I'm not ashamed, and I will not be. He done done too much for me. And listen, I believe this word. Do you hear me? I believe him because I've seen him do it, and I know who he is. I'm telling you, and I wouldn't be right here in front of this camera telling you the same thing if I, if I knew, if I knew that he couldn't do it for you. Come on, somebody. All right, let's look at this. First Peter uh, 1, 18, 19. Remember, he was the perfect sacrifice because he experienced the same things we experienced, but he didn't go through with it. So the way sin attacks us, how we feel, and then the things that causes us to stumble and to get caught up in it, he didn't get caught up in it, and he didn't stumble. So that made him still the perfect sacrifice. My goodness. Ain't nobody else. Ain't nobody coming and ain't nobody been here that's been the perfect sacrifice. Glory to God. Let me go back to 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19 in the New King James Version, reading this way. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So first, for thousands of years, man sought the most perfect of their flocks to offer as a sacrifice to God for the covering of their sins. So, you know, uh, in the book of the law, um, how, how we would, uh, I don't know, ask for forgiveness for our sins, they had to offer a sacrifice. But when they offered a sacrifice from the animals, the animals had to be perfect and without a blemish. So listen, they couldn't have three legs or limping or one eye because one was damaged or they was born uh, with some kind of defect. Um, you, you could do that. You, you had to find 
the one that did not have anything wrong with it at all. What? It was a shadow of the coming of Jesus, right? So because we brought unblemished animals to God, God brings us an unblemished Savior <laughs> to die for us. Come on, somebody. He did, he did what we, he had us to do. But he, isn't this great? He said, okay, y'all have to do this. But wait, the man, we as man made the regulations. Before we start blaming God, oh, well, we couldn't do that. But we said that we could do it. And he said, okay. So, yes, now we're in this covenant that we couldn't hold up our end to. My goodness. So then how does God bring uh, mercy? He says, okay, this is what you can do. Right? Because sin brings death. That's blood. So we had to bring an animal that was perfect to, to offer it as a sacrifice, to kill it and to offer it as a sacrifice to cover ha, our sins. I'm going to come in. Here we go. So, but these lambs could never take away man's sin, only cover them. Come on, somebody. You see that little background I gave you? <clears throat> um, because no lamb is divine and no lamb is truly perfect. Jesus, the perfect lamb of God, lived a perfect life having never sinned. Number three, he is our high priest. Now, he can be our high priest because he has flesh. Come on, somebody. He became human. So now Jesus can be the high priest, too. Another reason for Jesus becoming a man was so that he might become high priest. Told you. <laughs> I'm all into this lesson. I'm going to have to. All right. So Hebrews. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. And I'm going to read it through the uh, New Living Translation, okay? Hebrews 2, verses 14 through 17 reads it this way. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way he could he only in this way could he set us free. All who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Lived our lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could uh, be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. So under all of these conditions, did Jesus uh, do what he did so that he can do the main thing? He could take away the sins of all people. He can take away, not cover them, take them away where there are no part of us whatsoever. Love you, Jesus. Jesus became a man so that he could die a physical death in our place to pay the price for our sins, but also so that he could be our high priest. Yes, the high priest, you know, so God, eternal being, you know, we can't see him. We can't kill him. Ah, we can't. So in order for him to die, the horrific death that he died, he had to become flesh. So he was put himself in a position to be able to pay what the cost was for all mankind. My goodness. So after he, after he died on the cross, Jesus went to heaven and entered the Holy of Holies. My goodness. And he offered his blood on the mercy seat for the forgiveness of our sins. So if he's without sin, then he can't get forgiveness for his sin. But he can put the price of his blood at the mercy seat so that our sins can be forgiven. Listen, if you're sinning, you're not alone. The person right next to you is sinning. <laughs> I mean, 
you sin it, we all sin it, right? But I don't want to be in bondage or a slave to sin. Listen, if I'm going to be a slave, it will be to Jesus Christ. Did you hear me? But it will not be to sin because his burden is light. <laughs> Glory. Okay. Come on, y'all. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. He became one of us in order to restore us to the Father. Amen. We are restored to the, the Father. We don't have to say God. We can say Father or we can say Abba. But we can make our, our lives personal with God Almighty. Mercy. Creator of heaven and earth. He who owns all things, who brought everything we can have a personal relationship because Jesus restored what we messed up. Come on, somebody. We messed it up. God didn't mess it up. He gets blamed for messing it up. He gets blamed for a lot of things. But Jesus restored what sin had destroyed. So number three, where he is, where he is, he ascended back to heaven that's right come on you come on work with me i hear you not really i don't really hear you okay just yeah acts <laughs> let's look at acts of uh, verse uh, chapter one verses nine and ten a hey, you know i know there's several of you i know who's going to talk about me just for saying that when you see me it's okay but i'm going to read this from the niv version you ready so I'll start with verse nine after he had said this he was taken up before their very eyes so in this scripture, you know, Jesus is walking with them, right? And then he, you know, he's, he says this part and then he just starts to float up. He just right before their eyes, Jesus starts going up into heaven <laughs> and they're looking up. Then a, a cloud hides him, you know, and I love this. Watch this. We keep our gaze on Jesus. Then the angels appear standing next to him and said, hey, <laughs> now go do the work. Okay, let me read it. I'm going to read it for you. I love this. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you what it says. Okay, after he said this, he was taken up before their eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. So Jesus had completed all that he came to earth to do, all that he came to earth to do. Remember on the cross, he said, it is finished. He came to do all that he came to do, right? He did all that he came to do. Then it says, he taught man how to live in righteousness. He restored our relationship with God. He died on the cross. He rose again so that those who believe in him could be saved with uh, with his work he completed, he ascended back to heaven. What he is, what is he doing in heaven today? All right, he's seated on the throne. But let me, I just, now that I got all that out, I don't want to mess it up. It says, so when we keep intently our focus on Christ, right, the work continues. He said, greater works than these will you do. Because I go to my father. Now, right here, he told him that. Now he's doing what he said. But just remember, the other part is, he said, greater works than all these things you see me doing, you will do. Why? Because he restored our relationship with God. See, there's, it's not an accident that the Bible says Jesus departed alone by himself. Guess what we do in the morning when we get up? We part alone by ourselves with the Lord. What do we do before we go to bed? Well, we can part alone by ourselves with the Father. What, what can we do in the middle of the afternoon? We can part alone and go spend time with our Father. With our Father. So everything that Jesus modeled in front of uh, the disciples, in front of all of those that believe in him, in front of the crowds, guess what? We can do too. My goodness, I love that. Wow. So keeping our eyes intently on the Lord, but don't stay there. Watch this. Don't stay in that one spot, keeping your eyes intently on the Lord. Move, but keep your eyes intently on the Lord because we got to do the work. My goodness, I love you, Jesus. Since he taught us everything we needed to do to function um, like he did. And then he went to his place. Right, so, so I'm not going to tell my 
uh, grandson or you know, or my, my granddaughter, hey, okay, you need to do this um, algebra problem and they're eight. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them, hey, sit down and do your, do your math or your work without first teaching them how to do it. I'm not saying at eight they couldn't do algebra, but somebody's got to teach them. I'm not saying at eight they couldn't do geometry, but somebody has to teach them. I, I'm not going to tell you to do something that I haven't already taught you how to do, is what the Lord is saying. I'm, I'm telling you to do this because I taught you how to do it, and then I went up and sat down. Because I've left the power that I have with you to do it. He will never leave nor forsake you, yet God is with us. So if he's sitting on heaven, sitting in heaven on the throne, but he is Emmanuel, he is God with us right now. So I know we look up into the heavens, but guess what? Even while we're on the earth, he is with us to do the work. My goodness. Go spend time with the Father, then carry his presence to go do the work. Lord, I love you. That was good. Woo. Go on, Holy Ghost. Teach the lesson. Mark 16, verse 19 in the NIV version says it this way. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. He resumed his position of glory and power and dominion over all. He resumed. See, that's where he was before he came down, put on flesh, came down, taught us, then went back and said, now defeat. <laughs> glory to God. I love you, Lord. So he well, he wells the power of, uh, to defend and protect us from the evil one. And he has empowered us through the Holy Spirit to live a holy life. To live a holy, can you live a holy life? Oh, nobody can live a holy life. You can in Christ. Come on, somebody. You can with the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. He's the one who empowers us. We can't do it in and of ourselves. Glory to God. Spend time with the Father. He is ready to return for us. But guess what? We got to get out of this broken state. Let me go on. Acts uh, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. I'm going to read it in the NIV version. It says this. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, men of Galilee. Why, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who, was, who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Jesus promised that he would return again and receive us into heaven. He will re return and receive us. Listen, let him find us. Let us be where we have to be so that he can find us. Come on, don't be broken and out and sitting somewhere and not doing the work and cannot be sensed. Come on, somebody. I went back to Genesis on you. I need you to catch it. John in the, uh, chapter 14, verse 3 in the New King James Version says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Go prepare a place for you. He said, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So when he comes, he is not coming again for everyone. He is only coming for his people. But right now, if you're not his people, you can be. Come on, somebody. He is coming only for those who are saved by his grace. Saved by his grace. If you're saved by his grace, he considers you his people. My Lord, I love you. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. In the New King James Version says this, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning uh, those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Now, this is so many people are dying in this season. And I, I, I want to slow down here because even right now in my life, uh, enduring three deaths back to back, I, this, even though I know he said this, uh, this gave me uh, some encouragement, right? So he says, um, I don't want you to be uh, ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. You have hope, those that are in him. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who are asleep 
in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort. We'll see him again. Listen, when we're in Christ, this is why we can't get off the mission. We can't let people die outside of Christ because we want to see him again. Come on, somebody. Consider Jesus. Consider. This is number four. Consider Jesus. Consider Jesus just for a moment. Consider who he is and all that he has done. Consider what your response ought to be. If Jesus is Lord of all creation, he ought to be Lord over your life. If Jesus gave his life for us, we ought to live for uh, live our life for him. If Jesus is sovereign over all things, we ought to live we ought to live with boldness. Boldness, not fear, boldness. If Jesus is returning for his people, we ought to be ready for him. Come on, somebody. Got to shake you out of this. If Jesus is all of these things that scripture has revealed to us in our studies, then we ought to worship him in all that we do. Listen, through this lesson, I've been going, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Do you know why? Because as I was listening to these scriptures, he was saying he loved me. In all that he did, he said, I love you. And listen, I'm telling you, in all that he has done for us, in his living and in his dying, he's saying, I love you. In, in bringing us and delivering us out of sin, he says, I love you. In coming to the earth to model how to live this thing and not just live and not just be out here just living any kind of way and we get it wrong or right and at the end we'll just go to heaven. No, he came to define the reason because he loves you. Jesus loves you. He wrote this letter in the Bible so that you would know his will concerning your life and learning uh -oh, his will concerning your life. And his will is that you would live in him. His will is that you would receive him. His will is that you would not deny him. See, we deny him. He does not deny us. If we call him, call him call on his name, he answers because he understands our infirmities. He understands our pressures. So listen, in this season, coming in to this new year, listen, consider Jesus. Consider Jesus. He's the answer. Hey, hey, I love being with you guys. And if you want to see me again, come check out uh, uh, Matters of the Heart with Millennials. And I will see you again uh, with Corey Bailey on Millennial Monday. God bless you all.